This lesson is about algebraic expressions. You know what an expression is. It's a phrase or a sentence that expresses an idea. Here's an old expression of my grandmother. Just because a cat has kittens in the oven, you still wouldn't call them biscuits. I actually have no idea what that means, but it's an expression. It's just a bunch of words that conveys an idea that means something, well, it meant something to her anyway. So I'm going to throw just a little bit of vocabulary at you here. Um, you can probably survive without knowing most of these on the high set test. I think the first one uh, is probably one that you should be most familiar with in case it does show up on the test and as we talk about algebra. And that word is variable. A variable, variable means changeable. When something varies, it changes. So a variable means the letter part of an expression. For example, the x here, the y, over here in 7 minus y, this z is a variable, this z here is a variable. And we don't know what x is here. x could be anything. It's not set to equal anything at the moment, so we could put anything we want there for x. It's changeable. It is variable. Another word we should be at least a little bit familiar with is this idea of a constant. This is less likely to show up on the test as a word that they'll ask you to know, but in case we refer back to it, a constant is simply a number part of an expression or an equation that doesn't have a variable attached to it or involved in any way. 4 is a constant. 4 is always going to equal 4. 7 is always going to equal 7. Their meaning is constant. And I've got to apologize a little bit for this last word, coefficient. Uh, it's an unwieldy word, and I'm not completely sure why it even has its own word. But basically, a coefficient is simply a number in an algebraic expression that is squished up right next to a variable. It could also be up next to some things going on in parentheses, but the point is, when we multiply in algebra, we do not put a time sign. This means 8 times z. And when we write an algebraic expression like this, and it's multiplying, the coefficient is the number part, 8. Kind of confusing? Well, I probably won't even use that word for the rest of this lesson. All right, a quick word. Uh, one of the exercises coming up is IXL. If you're doing the Martha O'Brien High Set Math course, we use the IXL program to get a lot of practice problems. And they're going to give you uh, something written in words they want you to write as an algebraic expression. And one thing you need to keep in mind is that certain operations obey the commutative property and certain ones don't. The commutative property is a very simple property. It just means that you can swap numbers. So when you're adding 3 plus 4, that's 7, that's the same thing as 4 plus 3. It's commutative. So I can write x plus 4 or I can write 4 plus x. It doesn't matter which. But I can't do that with subtraction. Subtraction is not commutative. So again, using regular numbers instead of variables, and this is how you can remember uh, which of these are commutative, is by using regular numbers. If I had $7 and you took away $3, why would you take my money? I don't, I don't really understand. I'm trying to be nice and make these videos, and you're taking money from me, but you could do it. However, if I had $3 and you tried to take away 7 you couldn't do it. I'd still owe you four bucks. And so these two are not the same. They are not equal to each other. And therefore, 7 minus y is not equal to y minus 7. We cannot write them. Oh, that's a y minus z. Sorry about that. I'll erase that. y minus 7 is not the same as 7 minus y. Multiplication is commutative. 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3. However, uh, we don't write, first of all, we don't write the time sign when we're doing a multiplication in algebra. We just squish them together. And secondly, even though 8 times z and z times 8 are the same, we just don't write the letter first. We don't put the variable in front of the number. 
we uh, always put the number first. It's just a convention, and it makes a lot of other things that you'll be learning soon easier. And we have division. Uh, we're going to write division most of the time. It's going to look like a fraction. Those are basically two ways of thinking about the same thing. Uh, z over 3 is a fraction, and z divided by 3 are basically the same idea. If you don't remember why that is, you might go and review fractions. So we can think of this as a division problem. z divided by 3. And that is not commutative. That is not the same thing as 3 divided by z. Or if you put a real number in here, let's say 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. But 3 divided by 12, if you do that on your calculator, you're going to get a different number, 0.25. These are not equal. So what are we going to do with expressions? Well, sometimes we're going to string them together into equations. In other words, we're going to look at a word problem and we're going to turn it into algebra so that we can solve it. Uh, don't be too scared of that. The uh, algebra word problems on the high set are fairly basic. And a lot of times they will just have answer choices that ask you how you would set the problem up. They don't even ask you to solve it. Uh, so let me give you a couple of examples. If you're doing this in connection with the Martha O'Brien high set math course, uh, you'll be doing some IXL exercises that will look a bit like this. And it just asks you to write an expression that represents 5 added to x. All that means is we're going to take an x and we're going to add 5 to it. And then if this was an algebra problem, there'd be some additional steps. We'd create an equation and solve it. But right now, all we're doing is writing an expression to represent this idea of 5 being added to x. All right, this is a problem that causes a little confusion for some people. Write an expression to represent 2 less than y, and people get confused. Am I going to do 2 minus y or y minus 2? So the way to think about it is let's use some real numbers to uh, think about what it would look like in the real world that you're used to. Let's say that you had $10, and I had 2 less than you. I had 2 less than 10. How many am I going to have? 8. So what we must have done here is taken the 10 that you had, and to figure out 2 less, we simply subtract 2. Okay, what we do not do is start with 2 and then subtract 10. That doesn't make any sense. That is not 2 less than 10. That is 10 less than 2, which is not what it asked for. So if you, if you think of these almost like little sentences where you've got a letter that's simply replacing a number, then we're going to have Y dollars. It doesn't have to be dollars. It could be apples. And if I were going to have 2 less than that, I would be taking the 2 away from the y. I would not be taking y away from the 2. Write an expression to represent the product of y and 5. Hopefully you remember product means we're multiplying two things together. And hopefully you also remember that even though this is correct... When we get to algebra land, we don't really use the time sign anymore. For one thing, that looks like an x. Is this 5xy or 5 times y? Uh, so what we do instead is we write 5. We leave off the time sign. We write 5y. And remember, even though multiplication is commutative, we just simply do not write it y5 like this. It just doesn't uh, really help when you've got to do other things in algebra to have the variable part, the letter part, first. So this one, it's written kind of in the way that you would write it down as an expression. Uh, y divided by 4. So let's say if y was 12... 12 divided by 4. It would look like that. And you, you just don't want to get confused. I'm going to put a not equal sign. So an equal with a little slash through it. 
these are not the same. And 12 divided by 4 does not equal 4 divided by 12. All right, so it's really not that hard to write y divided by 4. And I have seen some high set problems where they will actually keep the division symbol. They're asking you, well, how would you solve this problem? And it's got a variable involved. And, and sometimes they'll actually keep the division sign. But typically when you're doing algebra, we're going to take the first number and put it on the top, the second number and put it on the bottom. And whether you think of this as a fraction and the, this little guy right here as the fraction bar, or whether you think of it as a division problem and this is a division bar, you end up getting the same thing. What we can't do is put 4 on top of y. That'll get you a completely different number.